This is SSP TV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. Shots fired and a standoff in Hazelton. We have a report from the scene next. Hello everyone, I'm Ken Kara, and thanks for watching us in HD on Service Electric Cable Vision Channel 513 and in SD on Channel 13. And use Apple TV and Google Chromecast and download the Samsung Productions app to stream us on your TV. Let's get right to our headlines now from SSP TV and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. One man is dead after a standoff that lasted for more than five hours today in the city of Hazelton. SSP TV News was on the scene after multiple police departments and state police responded to a home on East Elm Street around 8 this morning. Gerard Longo, a former Hazleton resident, returned home for his mother's funeral over the weekend. My mother passed away last week and we had the funeral on Saturday. So that's why I'm here. I actually live in San Diego, so I'm on my way back there in a couple days. So what happened here today? I don't know. Uh, I was in bed and I heard like seven shots. I came and came out and I looked and you could see all these police cars are here. So what was going through your mind? Because there you are, you just laid your mother to rest. <laughs> it was like, I, we've been here for over 50 years and nothing like this has ever happened here. Longo says that the garbage truck was in the process of picking up recyclables when police arrived and was still parked there. Officers tried to force the man out with gas. Then around 1.30, the situation ended. Our Janine Lassant talked with Hazleton Police Chief Jerry Speziali, an interview you saw live on our Facebook page. I can tell you that we had threats against children um, that involved social media, um, threats against the public. Officers responded here. When they responded here, the individual opened fire on the officers. Officer exchanged fire with the individual. We now have the SWAT team that was activated on a special operations group. We tried to call the individual out uh, several times, as you can see. And now we have a crime scene. We have a male deceased and we have the officer that is going to be treated for trauma. Uh, you mentioned that uh, children were involved as far as... Uh... Children were involved as an ancillary. They were, going, they were being threatened through social media as to uh, certain things that were going to be done to children. As a result of that, we took action and came here. In today's world, we can't take this lightly, and that's basically what we did at that point. The, the officers arrived here. It was pretty much an ambush at that point. Uh, location of the vehicle, uh, excuse me, of the home? The location of the home is uh, 305 uh, East End. No police officers hurt? Police officer is going to be treated for trauma uh, because, as I said, he was fired upon and he returned fire. So I have a, a crisis intervention person coming and I may possibly even force him to go to the hospital just to be checked out for trauma. As far as any houses around, any um, the only thing, uh The only thing is the gas was on um, when I was over there securing the window, and basically all of a sudden the gas started to rush out. I didn't know if somebody turned stoves on, and I was concerned that officers that were entering could have gone in and obviously keyed a mic on a radio and had an explosion. So I immediately took something and shut the gas off on the house. So both of these homes will be held off for now. They're going to have to be held down. It's an active crime scene. The name of the man involved has not been released. Check our Facebook page for updates. Crime will be the topic of the annual Luzerne County Crime Watch meeting scheduled for tomorrow night. Crime Watch groups and the public are welcome to the Luzerne County Courthouse for the event that will be held in County Council's meeting room. The County Crime Watch meeting is tomorrow night at 6 p.m. at the Luzerne County Courthouse. The 2018 Kentucky Derby is on May 5th and I can already taste the mint juleps. That's a lie, I never had one, but this is the truth. You don't have to wait until May for some horse racing fun. Here's Lisa Sugar. A popular event in our area is returning. It is the Rotary Club of Hazleton's Night at the Races, and it's scheduled for Saturday, April 28th from 6 to 10 p.m. at the J.J. Ferrara Center. That's where the PTPA is on Broad Street in downtown Hazleton. Jason Brenner is the project chairman for this very popular event. Can't believe it's time already for this. And, uh... You're telling me. <laughs> 
<laughs> it seems like it was just yesterday you were here talking about it and a whole year has gone by. Yep, that's 100% uh, true, but we're very excited this year. We've got a whole new lineup of uh, horses ready to run, so we're excited. Well, give us the details of how people can get involved and attend this. Sure. Uh, well, so tickets are $8 at the door. Uh, I'm sorry, $8 in advance and $10 at the door. Um, and you can buy horses and you can uh, also bet on the horses. We're basically going to be running an off-track uh, betting uh, site for the evening. Um, also, there's a, a lot of free food. There's tricky trays. So it's, it's going to be an exciting event. So these events are fun. You're actually showing movies of horse races and people actually get to bet on them. So you have to be 21, though, to come to the event, right? Yes, absolutely. You must be 21. Uh, and it's also a BYOB event, so um, you're, you're able to bring your favorite refreshment with you as well. All righty. And if they want to port purchase a horse, do they do that in advance? They can do that in advance uh, or they can do that on site. We will have uh, a number of races that are left blank and, and ready for, for uh, people to participate. Tell us why this event is so important to the Rotary Club of Hazleton. So we, every year, we spread money around the community to various agencies all over the, all over the place, whether they're, um, you know, uh, native to Rotary or outside, um, and just agencies that help our, help our community. All of the money, not, not one dime goes to our administration, so everything is, uh, is donated back into the community, so that's why it's a, it's a great event. It truly is. The Rotary Club does great things for the community. I guess maybe give us a few highlights. I know um, it was the dictionaries, I believe, that mm -hmm. you guys put into the schools for the kids. You do great work. Yes, the, the dictionaries are a very popular program. Um, we've been doing that for years. Um, we have other events. Um, we've helped a number of the food pantries, whether they're with Catholic Social Services or outside. Soul Kitchen is a, is a new uh, a beneficiary this year, and we're very excited to help them out. They, they seem like a great organization. Um, and there's, there's several other uh, uh, events that we do, you know, every year. You'll always see our, our folks out um, helping the community. Absolutely. Now, you told me that this is even in conjunction with another event that will benefit the community, and that's the Drop the Drugs van. Yes, uh, we're excited to partner with the Drop the Drugs van, so the, the city police will be on site at the beginning of the event. Um, so if you have unwanted medicine or unused medicine uh, that you'd like to drop off, you can drop it off anonymously, uh, no questions asked. So we're excited to, to help get some of the drugs off the street, too, in, in our town. That's great. I know your dad's be, been involved with this yes. big time to get this off and running. So you can do two great things for the community. You, well, actually three, because you'll have fun. You'll come out and you'll support the great works of Rotary. And you'll also help to get drugs off the street if you can bring some of those to drop off at the Drop the Drugs van. If they want more information, they want to get tickets in advance or anything, what do they do? Sure. They can call me. Um, my number is 570-454-8706. Uh, That's our, our business number. Call, ask for Jason Brenner. You can also just go to anyone, if you know any Rotarians in the community, go to them. They have tickets, they have the sheets to be able to sign up for horses. And, uh, you know, we're also selling uh, advertising space and sponsorship space, um, you know, throughout the event just to, to kind of help boost uh, our ability to, to, to uh, funnel money back into the community. And you wanted to give a shout out to the people who make this event possible. I, I certainly do. We've had a, lot, a number of great sponsors this year to include Avellino Enterprises, uh, Community Bank, um, Burger Family Dealerships, uh, as well as Imbriaco Construction, uh, One Group Insurance, and Hayden Electric. But uh, we still have lots more space available. So um, please give us a call, reach out to us, reach out to uh, other Rotarians because um, you know, we'd, we'd love to get the entire community involved. Alrighty, it's going to be a great night. Again, it's happening Saturday, April 28th from 6 to 10 p.m. at the J.J. Ferrara Center. That is where the PTPA performs their great uh, shows there as well. So if you would like to come on out, you can get the tickets in advance for $8, $10 at the door, or you can call Jason for more information or to be a sponsor. Come out and support this great event. And don't forget, bring along the drugs to drop off in the Drop the Drugs van as well. Great events happening right here in downtown Hazleton. Thank you, Lisa. Well, do you know what baseball stadium opened on this date in the 1960s? Ron Marchetti does, and he has this week's edition of Trivia Treats coming up. And up next, another interview during Child Abuse Awareness Month with the Executive Director of Luzerne County's Child Advocacy Center. This is SSP TV News, your place for 24 hours of your hometown news and information. This is SSPTV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. 
I'm very pleased to have back in our studios today Shannon Peduto, who is the executive director of Luzerne County Child Advocacy Center in Wilkes-Barre. Uh, Shannon was back with us earlier talking about uh, a pinwheel event, the pinwheel dedication ceremony that was held back on April 6th, kicking off a month-long event. So that was a success, and now you're looking to get the word out more because this is Child Abuse Prevention and Awareness Month. Correct, it is. Every April uh, is when we highlight what is happening to the children in our community. Not every child has a, an amazing upbringing and has wonderful circumstances in their youth. Uh, children actually report being sexually and physically abused. So every April we want to highlight that because children who actually have the courage to report abuse uh, come to our center, receive free services. Uh, we make sure that we are able to help these children and and kind of educate the community every April that abuse is happening and this is how you report it. This is what you can do to help these children. And the fact that it is free is made possible by a wonderful event that's coming up later this month. So you want the community to come out and have an evening of fun but it's all for a very serious cause. Correct. Every year we host uh, our annual gala, and it is almost the closing ceremonies of a month long of events uh, and education opportunities that we do within Luzerne County and some of our surrounding counties. It's actually going to be our fabulous 50 sock hop. It will be Friday, I'm sorry, Saturday, April 28th at Mohegan Sun Pocono, uh, 6 to 11 p.m. It's going to be a great night. We encourage people to come out, get your poodle skirts on, your saddle shoes, your leather jackets come out for a great night. Now, they can get tickets. They could also be a sponsor. So tell us about both. Correct. Both tickets and sponsorship opportunities allow us to put this event on. All the money that is raised goes back directly to providing free services to the children in Luzerne County who report being physically and sexually abused. So everything and everyone that you, would, if you attend, if you're a sponsor, even if you make a donation to the event, um, an item for our silent auction, everything goes back to the children. How does someone donate or how do they get tickets? You can always call our center at 570-208-2895. You could go onto our website at luzernecountycac.org. There's links there for sponsorship opportunities. We actually have ticket sales uh, available on Eventbrite as well. The link is there. Um, so you can email us at info at luzernecountycac.org. Any way you can get to us and we would be glad to provide information. And lastly, if someone in our viewing audience maybe needs the services of the center, what do they do? If you know that child abuse is taking place, we encourage people to call a uh, child line. Uh, please, it can be anonymous. You can also call our center if you're looking for information on what to do. Again, 570-208-2895. Is that the most difficult step that someone has to take to make that phone call? Yes. A lot of times people are afraid to report. Uh, they're afraid that something may happen to them if they report. But you can call Childline and you can make an anonymous report. You never know the impact that that one phone call can make until you make it. That child may be calling for help and you may be the only opportunity for help that they have. So we encourage people to make that phone call. All right, and we encourage people to support your big gala coming up as well. Again, go to their website or give a call to the center for more information. And if you need their services, please do not hesitate to ask. Time now for weather on SSPTV News. The city through the trees and um, snow tonight. Here's our forecast from the National Weather Service. Tonight, 70% chance of precipitation. New snow accumulation of around an inch possible. We'll have a low of 29 degrees. On Tuesday, 30% chance of precipitation. A chance of rain and snow showers. We'll have a high of 45 degrees. New snow accumulation of less than a half inch. Tuesday night, partly cloudy. Lows in the upper 20s. Wednesday is mostly sunny. High of 47. At night, mostly cloudy. Lows in the upper 30s. Thursday, 40% chance of some rain. High of 58 though. Thursday night mostly cloudy. Lows in the lower 40s. Friday mostly sunny. High of 67. Friday night partly cloudy. Low 49 degrees. And now our weekly feature law tips on SSP TV News. My name is attorney Alexis Falvello. I'm with the Falvello Law Firm. My family has been serving the uh, legal needs of the Hazleton area since 1923 when my great grandfather graduated from law school. Uh, my grandfather was also an attorney serving the needs of the Hazleton area as well as my father and now I've taken on the role of ownership of the Falvella Law Firm. I've been practicing law for over 10 years 
uh, prior to coming to Falvella Law Firm, I worked in the district attorney's office as a prosecutor. I was there for a period of approximately eight years, and during my time there, I prosecuted vehicular homicide cases where victims were involved in car accidents with other individuals that may have been under the influence of alcohol or just negligent in the way in which they were driving their vehicle, thereby bringing on criminal charges. Uh, at this point in time, I am handling the civil needs of individuals who have been involved in car accidents through no fault of their own. If you're involved in a car accident, give us a call. Your case is our fight. Here's your midday winning lottery numbers on our green screen. Pick 2, 3, 8, pick 3, 1, 7, 4, pick 4, 4, 3, 4, 8, and pick 5, 8, 4, 9, 4, 0, and the wild number is 5. It was a busy weekend of local sports. We'll get you caught up when we come back. Time now for sports on SSPTV News. The Hazleton Area High School won a pair of baseball games over the weekend. Here's the SSP TV standard speaker scoreboard. The Big HA went to extras to beat Coughlin in their Wyoming Valley Conference home opener. Matt Gentile played the winning run. Alex Mentler was the hero in their non-league win over Freedom. He had the winning RBI. Cody Reese struck out eight for the Cougars. Now on Friday, Hazleton Area was without coach Gino Cara, who was placed on administrative leave and three players who were suspended for violation of team and school policies. Hazleton Area School District Super Superintendent Brian Uplinger will decide when the coach can come back to the team. In Division Three of the Schuylkill League, Marion beat Shenandoah Valley. Quest Wilson struck out four in the shutout, and Max Nolter had a homer for the Colts. Jacob Thomas went deep in Shenandoah Valley's win over Minersville, and Matt Doherty hit an RBI in Marion's loss to Bloomsburg. Penn State Brandywine swept by Penn State Hazleton in baseball and softball. Charlie Karchner was two for three in game one for the baseball team and had an RBI in game two. In softball, the local Lions had a lead in game one and pulled within a run in game two, but they lost both. Marissa Tribal Peace does not mind the cold spring temperature. She's crushing the ball for the Hazleton area softball team. She had a two run home run and the Lady Cougars win over Tunkanic, so did Kira and Tolik. Erica Bullock had three hits and was the winning pitcher against Emmaus. Emily Shaw drove in four runs in Marion Softball's win over Shenandoah Valley, and Macy Lansky had three RBI, but Marion lost a non-league game to Lake Lehman. Joe Grula won the triple jump, the high jump, and the javelin, and Ryan Steiner won the 800 and 1600 meter runs as Hazleton area edge Coughlin in track and field. Kutera Leggett won the shot put and discus for the Lady Cougars, who also got a win. Easton topped Hazleton area in boys volleyball. Liberty beat the Lady Cougar lacrosse team. Wyoming Valley West beat MMI in boys tennis. The Preppers won at second doubles. And Abatal of Lino hit a walk-off home run on opening day for the Rail Riders at PNC Field as they opened up their series against Syracuse with a win. But it was Syracuse who scored the winning run on a throwing error on Saturday. But the Rail Riders took the series on Sunday. Cruising toward the Calder Cup playoffs, the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins won two over the weekend, scoring 12 get goals in two games. Now it's time for Ron Marchetti. Welcome to Trivia Treats on this April 9th, the day after the Masters. Hi everybody. The 1962 baseball season opened on this day in Washington, D.C. Stadium, and President John F. Kennedy was there to throw out the first ball in the brand new $24 million D.C. stadium 56 years ago today. Also on April 9, 1981, 37 years ago today, pressed into the starting pitching assignment for the Dodgers at home on opening day after Jerry Royce pulled a calf muscle, Fernando Valenzuela hurled a five-hit shutout in his first major league start to defeat the Astros 2-0. In his first eight starts in 1981, Valenzuela compiled an 8-0 record, pitched five shutouts, and allowed only four runs over 72 innings. The tremendous early success of the Sonora, Mexico native resulted in Fernando Mania as he became an instant media celebrity while drawing huge crowds to Dodger Stadium, particularly from the Latino community. He finished that strike-shortened season with a 13-7 record, a 2.48 ERA, and a start in the All-Star game, and went on to win the Rookie of the Year and the Cy Young Award and a World Championship ring. 
That was in 1981. Now let's go back even further to 1962, exactly 56 years ago, this early April. The body of boxer Benny Kid Perret was flown to Miami for burial. The day after, 20,000 plus people filed past the casket of the former welterweight champion at a Bronx funeral home before it was taken by hers to Idlewild Airport. Mrs. Lucy Perret, the 21-year-old pregnant widow of the fighter who died 10 days earlier after he was beaten into a coma by M.L. Griffith in a Madison Square Garden championship fight, arrived in Miami early to uh, make a funeral arrangements. She was carrying a, a wreath labeled Champ, which was later placed on Perrette's casket. Finally, 42 years ago in 1976, with the aid of a 20 mile per hour wind blowing toward the outfield walls, Mike Schmidt blasted four consecutive home runs while driving in 11 runs as the Philadelphia Phillies overcame an 11 run deficit to beat the Cubs 18 to 16 in 10 innings at Wrigley Field. The Cubs led 13 to two at the end of the fourth inning, only to lose in the 10th frame. Schmidt clobbered a two run homer in the fifth, a grand slam in the seventh, a three run blast in the eighth, and a two run game winning shot in the 10th. Schmidt also singled for a total of five hits and 17 total bases with 11 RBIs. Needless to say, it was the best game of his career. Mother of God. Till Friday, be a good sport and stay close. Good evening, everyone. Here's today's talk of the town. A happy birthday goes out to Helen Saquette of Junedale, who's celebrating her birthday today with love from your family and friends. And another happy birthday goes out to the boss man here at SSP TV, Sam LaSant Sr. Happy birthday, love your family, friends, and everyone here at SSP TV. SSP TV News would like to send our sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Grayson Carter Capus of Drums. A memorial service will be held Sunday at 2 p.m. at Faith Assembly of God Church in Hazel Township. Friends may call Saturday from 4 to 7 p.m. at the Harmon Funeral Home in Drums. Corin A. Bargalone of Tresco. The Hazel Chapel of the Cropton Hughes Funeral Home will announce the arrangements. Josephine Devaney of Oneida, who lived to be 102 years old. Mass is Thursday at 10.30 a.m. at St. Joseph Roman Catholic Church in Shepton. Friends may call Thursday from 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. at the church. The Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home is in charge of the arrangements. Anna M. Bodbar of McAdoo. The Stanley E. M. Lossky Funeral Home will announce the arrangements. And Joe Ann L. Parks of Hazleton. Friends may call Thursday from 5 to 8 p.m. at the Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home in Hazleton. Attention pay-per-view subscribers. If you see your name now on SSP TV News, you can call in and win a free movie from Service Electric Cablevision. Today's winner is Anita Rossi of Hazleton. Call now and leave a message at 570-455-7267, extension 104, for your free movie. Tomorrow on SSP TV News, we'll preview the local racing season with Dino Alberto, and we'll head to a STEM event for women in the school districts of Hazleton, Weatherly, and Crestwood. And remember, if we get any more updates from the standoff in Hazleton, we'll post them on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash News. That's it for now, though. Take it easy, everyone. Watch us online anytime at ssptv.com and follow us on Facebook and Twitter.